Hey guys, Red Eye Ding right here, and we are back with some more Pokemon Black 2 Nuzlocke. Hey, right. so I did a little bit of grinding, but I've got a lot more to do, so that is what this episode is going to be about. Hey, right. so I've got Fiji, Greece, Wales, Cuba, Ireland, and Poland. Hey. Right. And I just need to get Greece, Fiji, and Wales up to level 50. Right? Because that's the level that I'm grinding them to. Cuba right? is actually incredibly good. we got a defensive, very powerful, like 126 physical defense. With a 98 attack. Right? I mean, it's not as good as Ireland... Um, you know, but, I mean, you've got Night Slash, Poison Fang, Crunch, and Toxic Spikes, and I'm trying to remember where I can find either Cross Poison or Poison Jab to replace Poison Fang. Maybe. But, anyway, today is literally going to be me going back and forth on this patch of grass, eh, doing nothing but encountering, I don't know, but, I am also going to tell you, this is the first installment of my, um, Half-remembered stories. Okay. It's essentially, this is a... Uh, if there's nothing else that I need to do in video games and I just need to grind, I'm going to be telling you stories that I remember from my childhood. As in, like, the story of Buddha. Or the story of Jesus. Or the story of Genghis Khan. Or Henry VIII. You know? Or the story of how America was created and stuff like that. But I'm going to do it in my half-remembered and my way as well. Right? And today is the beginning of that. And so sit back, relax, and enjoy my half-remembered tale of the life of the enlightened man. Buddha. Okay. So. Buddha uh, was born in India, obviously. I don't know when. I don't care when. And he was born a prince. Eh? And when he was born, he had everything he could ever want. Everything he could ever ask for. There was... Ooh... All he had to do was ask, and he would receive. That was it. Right? Um, <laughs> and he grew up like that. Eventually, uh, but... He was never allowed outside his compound. And in his compound, he had lush gardens. He had... Um, everybody loved him. Um, he had absolutely nothing to fear. Eh? But he got curious about the outside. Eh? Hey, Fiji's evolving. Uh, 
Um, and so, one day he asked his father, can I go and see the outside world? And his dad's like, sure, take a guard, you know, um, make sure you stay with the guard, make sure you stay in the cart, because it was obviously a horse-drawn carriage, so make sure you stay in the carriage. And, uh, you know, everything's going to be great. Um, and so they go out into the actual streets of India and everything's all good. People are waving at them. People are like, oh, yay. Like, uh, you know how they do when the queen goes around? Cause he is a prince and you know, all that's happening, but. Then, they uh, turn a corner and there's this person on the ground. And Buddha turns to his guard and goes, Hey, guard, what the fuck's that? And the guard says, Well, that is a uh, homeless guy, Buddha. A homeless guy? What the fuck's a homeless guy? You know, why don't I know about homeless people? Well, a homeless someone is someone who is you know, homeless. They don't have a home, so therefore they sleep on the ground. Okay, but why? Well, that's because they either can't afford it, or they, uh, for some reason, they don't have a home. Like, they can't afford it, they got kicked out, you know, they couldn't work. Um, so what, you just kicked him out? Well, yeah. Uh, he's very, very poor, so therefore, he lives on the street. And the Buddha was just like, okay, I don't understand, but whatever. You know, and he's like, I want to go home now. And so they did. They went home and he asked his dad, hey, dad, I, and the dad, OK, they go home and the dad goes to them and he's like, hey, Buddha, you see my kingdom, you see my people, you like them. And Buddha was like, yeah, it was I, right. you know. Uh, and and the, it was I. What the fuck do you mean it was I? It's my kingdom, you know. It's incredible. Um, and then Buddha was like, "Yeah, I saw this this uh this guy. What guy? And so, um, he saw a homeless. Then the guard comes up and he goes, he saw a homeless guy.'" Oh, okay. Well, is that I have some questions. And the dad's like, sure. Um, what questions do you have? And so why was he homeless? Well, probably he was poor. You know, in India... The way to enlightenment is money. Money equals power. And power equals enlightenment. So you think you're enlightened because you have money and power? Yes. Okay. And so that... So you're okay. You are at peace with yourself. Knowing that there are people out there starving because they can't work for whatever reason. And the dad's like, yeah. And the son's like, oh, I can't fucking do that, but whatever, you know. And so the... Uh, and so the dad then... Uh, like, okay, well, you'll get used to it, you know. Um, just, you know, uh, come on, go out, go to bed, you got a big day tomorrow, you got a big day of princing to do, and the son was like, oh yeah, sure, whatever. Um, I want to actually check. 
summary. So we got 56, 61. Okay. Mm, they're pretty much like they're all about the same, aren't they? Okay. Um. And so bloody um he grows up and he's like he, he grows up but he just can't get it out of his head you know um the fact that they they they're all these homeless people so when he's uh, an adult, he goes to his dad and he's like, "Yeah, I can't do this anymore, Dad. I, I, all I think about every day is the homeless people in our land, and we sit here stuffing our faces." And he's like, "Well, what the fuck are you gonna do about it, huh? You gonna leave?" And the son was like, "Yeah, so you can't do that. Well, why can't I? Because I said so. Oh, well, fuck you then, huh? I can do it if I want to do it." And then the son leaves. And the son essentially left to find enlightenment. He left to see if, like, because he wasn't satisfied with his father's way of enlightenment. Because it wasn't his way. You know? And so therefore, he, um... There you go. And so therefore, he just uh, started um, wandering India, you know, um, and he started walking up through India and eventually he came to a forest. And he started walking through the forest. And eventually, in that forest, he um, found a... Um, eventually, in that forest, he found a clearing. And in that clearing were three men. One man was sitting by the river, cross-legged. Okay? Eh? One man was walking around the clearing, you know, essentially doing laps. And the third man was in a tree, hanging upside down, essentially like a bat. Um... But, you know, um, and so, <sighs> sorry about that, um, I'm running on quite a few hours, I'm running on very few hours sleep, so. Where was I? Oh, yeah. And essentially, these people are in this bloody uh, uh, clearing and stuff like that. And as soon as he goes into this clearing, the guy from that's sitting by the river uh, looks at him and he goes, Ah! Another traveller, how can I help you? And Buddha looks at them all and goes, What the fuck are you doing? Like, what What the hell, man? Like, fucking weird, isn't it? And the guy goes, Yeah, I can see how 
people can interpret this as being wooey woo and weird. Um, and the guy's like, and uh, Buddha's like, you think, you know? Um, and so, ooh, it's like, so Buddha is like, well, what the fuck are you doing? Well, this is how we attain enlightenment, eh? The long and short of it is, Buddha, we are essentially denying ourselves the thing that we love most in this world, our base-based desire. And by doing that, we are purging ourselves of that want. We are abstaining from that, so therefore there is more room for God or, or, or um, um, I'm going to be perfectly honest, I don't know the main deity in um, the Buddhist religion. Um, but So we have more room for the divine in us. Um, and but it's like okay, I understand like the logic of that, you know. Hey, so, oh well, thank you. Um, so what are you actually doing then? And so the guy goes on to explain. Okay, well, me, I've. Always found myself thirsty, and I've always wanted. I always found myself unclean. So my base desire in life was to just wash myself constantly and to drink gallons and gallons of water a day. Okay, so what are you doing? So I sit by this river. I can do anything else I want, but I sit by this river. And I have a thimble full of water a day, and that's it. Eh? Okay. And I never go in the river. Okay. It's a bit weird, but sure, why not? Um... And any... Well, what about the other two? Well, the guy that's doing laps about the, uh... Uh, the uh, clearing, he's very, very lazy. So what he does is he just doesn't sleep. No, he just doesn't l lay down. He doesn't sit down. That, that's all he ever wants to do is nothing. You know? He's very, very lazy. So therefore, he has to be in constant movement. You know? He can drink as much as he wants, he can eat as much as he wants, he can sleep so long as it isn't out of laziness that he sleeps. Okay, I, I understand that. Okay, so... What else? Um, well, that's about... And he's allowed to rest. He is allowed 20 minutes of, you know, doing nothing a day. That's it. He's allowed 20 minutes. He always has to be doing something other than that. Okay. Um, but he can do anything else, so long as it isn't out of laziness. Okay, I, I understand that. Right, thank you. And what about the last guy? Well, the last guy, he is um, always wanting to sleep. Always. Day, night, doesn't fucking matter. All he ever wants to do is sleep. Okay. And so, therefore, he hangs upside down. Because it's very difficult to sleep when you're upside down. Plus, when he feels himself falling asleep, he will fall down off of that tree. And that will obviously wake him up. 
and then he will climb back up onto the tree and he will um you know go back to cl uh, being upside down and therefore he will not be a uh, lazy he will not be asleep okay he is allowed half an hour of sleep every day and that's it now that's it just half an hour so yep doesn't sound very safe but neither does only drinking a thimble full of water a day okay so what about you what do you mean what about me so what are you searching for well i'm i am searching for enlightenment i'll give you that so why don't you uh, join us? I don't really think it's my uh, my thing, mate. Is that, um, are you sure? How do you know? I don't know? I'll give you that. I don't know. Oh yes, psychic. Uh, get rid of future sight. Uh, yeah, get rid of future sight. So I do like attract, even though it's not very reliable. I do like attract. Um, I'll give you that. Um, I mean, you can stop whenever you want. I mean, we're not forcing each other. It's just this is what we believe will give us enlightenment eventually. It's like okay, so he look he looks and says, like, "Well, sure, I can do this. Why not?" I mean, being rich didn't, you know didn't give me enlightenment so maybe the opposite having nothing and, and sleeping outside and giving up my base desire maybe that maybe that will give me enlightenment you never know this filthy filthy man in a clearing who looks like he hasn't drunk a drop of water in 17 years obviously he knows what he's talking about and so he says sure why not let's do it and so the guy goes to buddha and he's like okay well what do you desire and the guy thinks and he's like uh money no money i never really Longed for money. Um, women, no. But again, it was just sort of something that came about as a byproduct of being the prince, not something that I went to look for. Well, I, uh, I guess I am always quite hungry. You know, I, I always snacked quite a bit. I always had big meals. Um. You know, uh, that sort of thing. Okay, well, there it is then. There what is? There is your abstinence. Okay. Instead of not eating, instead of not drinking or not sleeping or not being lazy, you will only eat three sesame seeds a day. You can drink as much as you want. You can sleep as much as you want. You can be as lazy as you want. But you will only eat three sesame seeds a day. And the Buddha's like, sure. Okay, I'll give it a go. Why the fuck not? I mean, what's the worst they can do? I get skinny. You know? Well, skinny, yeah. Because apparently the Buddha at this point was still kind of skinny. And so... The um, Buddha starts with uh, the fucking thingamafuck. He starts with the sesame seeds. And he does this for months and months and months. I think he does it for about a year and a half, if my memory serves me right. And every day, he will eat his three sesame seeds, but... He would drink as much as he wanted. Water, that is. He would sleep as much as he wanted. And he would be as lazy as he wanted. Which was actually kind of good now. Because, you know, he has no muscles. And he has no... Like, he's skin and bones. 
You know, have you guys seen the picture of Buddha at this point? I've only, I, it's in my mind at the moment. Like, there's, but you never know. Like, I could be thinking of the correct picture where it's literally just, it looks like a bunch of bones with just skin sort of like thrown over it. That's what it fucking looks like in my head. I don't know if that's, that's right or not, but, you know. Um, anyway, uh, eventually the Buddha realizes that, look, mate, this might work for you. It's not working for me. You know, you do you, but I'm going to go. And the guy was, hey, to his credit, was like, yeah, this isn't really for everyone. And to be honest, we don't even know if this is for us. And the Buddha's like, what, what the fuck? And they're like, yeah, we haven't reached enlightenment yet. We just think that this is the way to do it. But well, you don't even know if this is the way or not. Well, I mean, if we knew, if people knew that this was the way, everyone would do it. And Buddha's like, okay, fair enough, fair enough. So, I'm going to go. And the guy's like, yeah, okay, fine. And Buddha then starts making his way up India, you know, starts talking to people, and whilst he's talking to people, he starts, ah, oh, okay, and whilst he's talking to people, he starts uh, uh, teaching them what he's been through, teaching them, uh, telling them his story, essentially, Rather than teaching, rather than teaching, more than telling, telling them his story, telling them where he come from, telling them about the homeless man, telling them about um, his father, and telling them about the people in the the forest, which nobody believed him. But you know, he didn't tell them where to find these people because he knew that they wanted their privacy. But you know, their lessons still stood. But he would only do this very sparingly. Like, as he was going up, it says you would just start talking to people. And as he was going up India, he eventually came across this sort of, like, monastery. And on the grounds of this monastery, this monastery was a sapling little oak tree. Couldn't have been any more than a... a four years old, you know, a few, couple of years old, it really wasn't that big at all, it was big enough that, you know, it was big enough that you could sit under it and it would offer just that little bit of shade, but when Buddha did sit under it, as he'd started eating again, um, he'd actually gone back to like a, obviously, Still pretty fucking skinny, but at least he he was able to move now. Um, so when he uh, leant against this tree, they uh, the tree bowed like in the shape of his back, sort of thing. Um, but. <laughs> Um, and so he started staying there. And that is where we will leave off part one of the story of Buddha. We're going to finish off next week with Buddha in his monastery and how the Buddha actually found enlightenment. Okay. But. Okay. We've nearly done Fiji, and I'm probably going to do Greece. I'm gonna, probably going to finish off Fiji and do Greece and Wales off screen. And get everyone to level 50, maybe even a bit higher. But, thank you guys. But, hey, other than that, that's uh, about it for this. So, hey, comment down below if you liked the story of Buddha, my half-remembered story of Buddha. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Because why not? It's free. And anyway, 
I'll see you guys in the next episode. But until then, bye.